importance of bringing back Sri Chan. Why do we do that? What is the significance of that? Why are we doing this? Isn't it crazy that we incorporate Sri Chan's into our Kurbana? It was already gone. What is the point of bringing back to the present generation? There is a reason. Until 1962, our church celebrated Mass Kurbana in the Sri language. Priests were well learned in the Sri language. Then slowly, Sri literacy went down, so we changed the Kurbana into the vernacular. Now, that was not in view of the Second Vatican Council. Second Vatican Council started in 1964, but we already established this Kurbana, the vernacular Malayalam Kurbana, initially bilingual Kurbana, in 1962, which means 10 years before we started the process. And then what we did was, we did away with everything that was Syrian. We didn't even keep the Salih Islam Amen or Barit Man or simple phrases. We didn't keep that. The only thing that we kept was Kurban. Fortunately, we kept that word and grateful because that word is so crucial. That word has a history, 5,000 5, year old history, Kurban offering and coming to the church to give something to God, which is a powerful, creates a powerful state of mind. Kurban. Abel offers the best of his cloth to God. Abraham offers, you remember that story. So throughout we see people coming to the Temple of Jerusalem. The Jewish people, when they went, went to the Temple of Jerusalem, they would always go with something. They won't go empty handed because they are going to offer something to the Temple. Even Joseph and Mary, they were rather poor people. They also brought something when they took the boy Jesus to the temple. They brought two small birds because if they were rich, they would bring a lamb. But they were humble people, uh, not so well to do people. So they brought a small uh, two birds as an offering. So, in other words, even if you are poor, you will bring something. Hello, widow's mind. Remember? That widow who was very poor, she had one small shekel, she put that in the temple. Because that was a mindset for the people of the Old Testament. When I go, I have to offer something to God. Now, that is a sense of Kurbana is a word, a Semitic word, that is tremendous history. When we say Mass, it doesn't mean anything. That's Messiah's Latin. Uh, the dismissal of the people at the end of the mass. So it, is, it, is, it doesn't have that connotation, that layers of meaning. But Kurbana has many, many layers of meaning. So we kept that word, fortunately. We should have kept a few more things. And so in I, took, I did my, when I studied, when I did my PhD at City University of New York Graduate Center, I decided to take three chants as a topic of my dissertation. Fortunately, I had a guide uh, who knew Middle Persian music. So when I suggested it, it was fine with me. If I told somebody that I was going to study Sri chants in university for PhD in America, pe literally people ridiculed me. My own priest in my congregation said, you're crazy. You spent all that money and time for studying something that is obsolete. But I persisted. And that was my doctoral dissertation. And during the work of the dissertation, I took a year break and then used a CD of Sri chants. Again, a crazy idea at the time, but that put me into the international field. Kambel Maran, Sri Chan from South India is there. So I called old priests who knew the language, who knew the songs. I made them, uh, we did a recording in the chapel, not in the studio, but in the chapel, and published a CD. Pine Records in the Netherlands published that CD. And that caught the attention of ethnomusicologists around the world. So that's, that would be the international scene, and that set the tone of my mission. So I finished my doctoral dissertation, and then um, the first commission that I got was Bishop Agadi on behalf of the Senate asked me to compose this Kurbana. So in this Kurbana also I used Sri chants in subtle ways, which you wouldn't think, but there, there are different ways. With the hymns of the Holy Spirit, you didn't see that today, and the hymns of Hallelujah, Bedas, Rick Chan, 
with the hymns of the Holy Spirit. I used this as a point of reference when I composed that melody. So Sirik melodies have come into. Then the Sirik performance practice, that's what we use in the Glory to God in the Highest. Glory to God in the Highest in three ascending pitch registers. That singing the same thing in three ascending pitch registers is like a Sirik uh, performance practice. The la la Glory to God in the Highest. So the priest will sing it three ascending pitch ministers and would say Amen. So we use that performance practice and use that technique. So there are several uh, things that we adopted from the Syriac heritage. So then I thought, if we did not do something, this language, this heritage, the sound, the meaning, all will be lost for humanity. Now, mind you, this is not Latin. This is Aramaic, the mother tongue of Jesus. This is the language of conversation at the Last Supper with Jesus with his disciples. This is in the language in which Jesus took the bread and blessed it and said, Hana Isa Pagradil. This is Hana. This Esau is Pagara body, the my. This is my body. This is these are the words that Jesus uttered. So this is a tradition. It's not like anybody else. It's not like any other Christians in the world. How many Christian communities in the world can be proud? of a share in the heritage of the language, of the words, of the sound, of the way of thinking in that language. Not many people. And our forefathers fought. They paid with their blood to retain that language. If you read letters from earlier, when the Portuguese missionaries came to Kerala, they said, these three Christians, they had such abject disrespect for our forefathers. They thought these are not real Catholics. They are using Syriac chant. And when they heard the chant, they are coming from the tradition of Europe, the Gregorian chant. When they came here, they heard this, ah, 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 oh, this is stupid. This is nothing. So they looked down upon us. But our forefathers said, no. We will not change this language. They wanted to change Syriac into Latin. But they said, no, no. Don't touch on this language. This is the language of Jesus. We share the faith from that table of the Last Supper. So don't play with us. Don't impose Latin on us. And what did they do? It's very interesting. The Portuguese traditions insisted on bringing Latin traits into our tradition. And what did they do? They took the help of people who knew Syriac and Latin. They translated Latin chants into Syriac. We translated uh, Thomas Aquinas' chant from the Mergo Panji Lingua into Surit. Shamba Lashan Allah This is the first dance of Panji Lingua. text in Syriac translation. And then there's another interesting factor. The second stanza, Tandamargo. We translated and we composed a new in Kerala. Did you notice special thing? Did you notice something special? Did you something, see something special here? One, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, seven, eight rhythm. 
not, not very much used in Western music, <coughs> maybe Greek music, maybe. But we use a rhythm that is very prominent in Southern music. We use that rhythm. So we took Latin things, but we adopted it to our culture. That's how we survived. So, in other words, we took Latin elements, we adapted to history because language is so sacred to us. My point is, in 1962, language became nothing. When we translated the liturgy into Malayalam, we just let it go. We didn't even think of it. So when my, I was already serving Mass in Sri, but next generation lost it. And your generation, so you are third generation after me. You lost it completely. So I thought, if this goes on, this language, this sacred language for which our forefathers fought so much, what the Portuguese missionaries did not succeed, we succeed. We got authority, we got our own bishops, we got our, our own power, and then we decided to let it go. So we are revisiting the past and correcting what happened in 1962 and re-bringing it back to the generation experience of your generation. And I'm immensely happy that you took it to heart and you are singing it well, relishing. So these are songs with layers and layers of meanings two very serious chants. One is Sagadin and Mar and the other is Bar Mariam. Sagadin and Mar, Dala Husar, Vanna Chusa, Villa Pulaga. Sure. Sagadin and Mar, Dala Husar, Vanna Chusa, Villa Pulaga. Sagadin and Mar, Lord, we praise you. In your Lala Husar, in your divinity, Allah Husar, and in your humanity, the La Pulaga. Pulaga means doubt. La Pulaga means without doubt. We praise you, Lord, in your humanity and divinity without doubt. Well, well. Pulaga also has a different meaning division. So, La Pulaga means without division. Then the meaning changes. We praise you, Lord, in your undivided humanity and divinity. Do you see the seriousness? Undivided humanity and divinity. How much blood we shed for this idea of understanding how human and divine nature is combined in the person of Jesus Christ. How many divisions took place in the, in the church among Christians? Council of Chalcedon, Council of Ephesus, all these issues were beautifully fully resolved in the 6th century poem written by Barbawai, a saint. How in two words so many layers of meanings were compressed. And our forefathers were saying this. On the one hand, the Portuguese missionaries were saying, these are not real Catholics. These St. Thomas missionaries are not real Catholics. They don't have the correct theology. But we were singing, your undivided humanity and divinity, we praise you without doubt. So that is contrast. That is irony in history. On the one hand, they were singing the correct theology. On the other hand, they were singing, oh, they didn't know Syria. Oh, you don't know anything. The other song is Bar Mariam. Bar Mariam. Bar Mariam. Bar Mariam. Bar Mariam. Bar Mariam. Bar Allah. Bar means son. Bar Mariam. Mariam. Bar Mariam. Bar Alaha. Alaha is the eldest Mariam. Son of Mary. Son of Mary. Mary brought forth the Son of God. So who is Mary? A is equal to B. B is equal to C. So A is equal to C. So who is Mary? She is the mother of God. She is the mother of God. Bar Mariam, Bar Mariam, Bar Alaha, the Empress Mariam. 
Son of Mary, Son of Mary, Son of Mary, she's Son of Mary. Mary brought for the Son of God. So she's the Mother of God. You know how much blood we shed in the history of Christianity for this concept. Should we call Mary Theotokos, Mother of God, Carrier of God, or Christotokos, Carrier of Christ? And Lord Jesus Mishri said, you are not real Catholics because you don't say Theotokos, Eme Dailaha. You are saying Eme Da Mashiha. But we were singing. We are referring to Mary. Mary brought forth the Son of God, not just Jesus as the Son of God. So we were singing the correct theology, even when the other people who did not understand ridiculed us and challenged us. We were doing this. So these are songs with layers and layers of meanings, sound theology, and we cannot relinquish it from our memory. We have to give it back to your next generation and generation after. And we have to prolong our umbilical cord. When we sing Surik chants, we extend our umbilical cord 2019 years to the last table of last supper. Do you feel proud? Do you feel proud? That's why we should do this. That's why you should relish singing three chants. That's why you should teach your children whenever that time comes, the three chants. So this is, this is why you should feel proud when you incorporate the three chants into the program. And I hope more and more. Uh, my dream is this. See, before communion, we have a short form of the Our Father. So my dream is that before the communion, we all say, in the words that Jesus told us. Who else has that privilege? To say, repeat that prayer in the same words that came from the mouth of the Son of God. This Abba, Abu, we made Abba. Some of you call your father Abba. It came from Abba. I cannot wish me up. We can do that. We can do that. We are intelligent people, so talented people. We can learn the language. We can learn associate words with shades of meanings. We can do this. My hope is that our hierarchy someday agrees to do that and, uh, and create, say the prayer in the same words. The words are the same. The sound, the, phonet the phonetics may have changed, but this is exactly the way Jesus used the word. Abun, abun, duvashmeya. Neskandas, holy. Smart, your name be made holy. So that's my dream. And you are the future of the church. And you should feel proud. Your mission is not only for Sri Ramana Church, not only for India, but for humanity. You are preserving an intangible cultural heritage of humanity.